We know that this study is showing increased risk of Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, these neurological disorders that you've talked about. Why is this happening to vegans in particular? Well, Parkinson's disease is caused by toxins. That's well known. But in vegans specifically, we're not eating enough DHA. And without DHA, your brain can't filter these toxins out, which is leading to the increase in Parkinson's disease. And there's toxins like Paraquat, for instance, is an herbicide. And that is banned in both the China and the EU, but still used here in the U.S. They said under strict guidelines, but what are those strict guidelines? So we're still getting that in the U.S. There's things like um, TCE, which is trichloroethylene in dry cleaning. That can cause Parkinson's disease. So the whole point here is that in vegans specifically, you're not eating enough DHA, and therefore your brain can't filter through these toxins that you're getting that cause Parkinson's disease. Right, and even the, even pesticides. On, we know that par- people living near golf courses have 125 increased risk of Parkinson's because of the weed killers they use on the golf courses. We know the toxins cause it. And what Kara is saying right now is that we have studies now that was published in I think 2024 that show that as the, the omega three index goes down less DHA exposure, then we see more signs of pro-inflammation, lipid peroxidase, um, glutathione peroxidase. We have seen le- less ability of the, the, the liver to detoxify compounds and less ability for the brain to detoxify compounds and more buildup of neurologic tox- toxins in the brain. So, so these omega-3s are really important for detoxification. And when yes. you talk about toxic toxin exposure, are you talking about toxins that we eat or that we're exposed to environmentally? Where are we getting these toxins from? I know there's actually probably a long laundry list. Yes, it's we're, we're saying that's a combination of residual toxins on food and residual toxins that we breathe. And uh, right now, some of these um, toxins that we know cause Parkinson's are things that are in the air that people can breathe if they live close to a, but they're using sprays on golf courses or you're getting your clothing dry clean. You, you know, so. I see on the internet, a lot of people use this term forever chemicals. Are these yeah. forever chemicals? Mm. I have to look at what forever chemicals are. They're the plas- the plas- <laughs> I think the forever chemicals are the plastic. The, the yeah, like the PFAs. PFAs, 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 PFAs are PFAs. They PFAs, are, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. could contribute to health, health problems and issues. I think what we're yep. finding here is that in the modern world, we're all exposed to a lot of chemicals. Yeah. And these chemicals cause neurologic deficits. And we need a powerful omega-3 index for the body to be able to not have those chemicals cause damage. So we're not saying the omega-3 causes the problem directly, but indirectly, you still get Parkinson's if you're not having another DHA, which then says to the, that's the non-vegans have more exposure to DHA, theoretically, from eating seafood in their diet right. than the vegans. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's some advantage to having the DHA from seafood for to prevent against and neurologic disease. And we're also saying that the shrinkage of the brain that could occur to increase risk of dementia in vegans, because like we should see more, much lower risk of ve- dementia in vegans, and we see more for the same reason, because l- low exposure to these, because you need a higher exposure to DHA for decades, for decades for the brain to slow the shrinkage of the brain with aging. And there's another study that came out in 2024 that showed that the people who had um, higher omega-3 index for decades and who supplemented with omega-3 with DHA had the lowest risk of dementia. In other words, they, they, they think the title of the study, can you read the title? It said personalized, um, about personalized personalizing the recommendations for an individual based on omega-3 index, causing the best outcome for lower risk of dementia. Very important study that came out. Do you have that, that right there? I didn't write the title names. I can get it. So, but you're saying, though, that there's an optimal range. Like, can you have too, mi- too much omega-3s, too much DHA, too much EPA? The amount of omega-3 index you want is between six and nine. So there is an optimal range. You don't want too much. What could happen if you have too much? If you're taking too much fish oil, see, we don't even recommend fish oil. We recommend because we think that the there's some rancidity in oils. And we use an algae-based DHA that we keep refrigerated in park and dark glass to reduce the rancidity. Because, you know, we're saying that the oils in your body, your fats in your body become rancid. That's what lipid peroxidase is. So but we're, so the oils get rancid out of the body too. So we're putting clean oil into the body. So we adjust that to get a favorable DHA. So it's cheaper to get a high dose. It's better, cheaper to get a higher dose with fish oil. But if you take too much fish oil, then especially too much EPA, it can thin the blood too much. That wouldn't occur with the low amount of EPA in our supplement. But if you're taking really like three or four grams of fish all day, the EPA component can make it more likely to bleed and can more likely have a hemorrhagic stroke 
and could actually suppress immune function and potentially increase of some infectious related agent. But that's when you're using a, a fish oil as a pharmacologic dose to thin the blood or to, to treat a problem. Right. We're not using it pharmacologically. We're using a much lower nutritive dose. Right. We're talking about, you know, so yes, you can get to a dose that's really high and we're so just like any other nutrient. If you take too much vitamin D, if you take too much iodine, if you take too much vitamin D, you could take almost any nutrient in excessive amounts can cause harm, but doesn't mean you want to be deficient in it either. Yeah, and you and I feel like you talk about the DHA EPA thing a lot. I think you've had a lot of pushback throughout your career and you're actually double downing now and saying, no, you want to take it and you want it to be clean. I think historically you said there have been some studies that are tracking omega-3s with rancid oil, so it doesn't really show the effectiveness. Is that true? It's true that the oils used are rancid, and so which limits the potential benefits. But I'm still saying that a low omega-3 index is the is a accurate indicator of long-term omega-3 use of where you're, how much you're taking. But even that is not good enough if you do wait till you're 80 years old to start fixing it. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're not using it. And by the way, the studies also show that people who had Parkinson's, just to mention that, taking omega-3 did slow the progression of the Parkinson's, by the way. Mm -hmm. But we're saying here that taking omega-3 prevents Parkinson's and prevents shrinkage of the brain, both those things in the dentist health study too. But the, what we're saying here is that you have to maintain an adequate level of DHA exposure for decades to protect the brain against these diseases. You can't just wait till you have a problem. And that's what the studies were limited because they found, they said, does it protect, does it benefit people with dementia or people with, who have the disease or when you start giving it to a person high at risk? Well, don't wait till a person's high at risk. Mm -hmm. It's my argument with people with SALT, with the American Heart Association saying, you don't wait till a person has heart disease to cut out the SALT. You live your life without the SALT, so you don't develop heart disease. It's the same thing here. It's long-term exposure that showed the best results. Right. Was this study showing increased risk of stroke that you mentioned? Because I know we've talked about that, that vegan populations have an increased risk of stroke as well. Right. Is that what this study showed? The study showed an increase. What was it? 17% increase of stroke? Yeah. 17% wow. increase of stroke in the vegans. So there's a few different issues in this study that are being highlighted when you eat just a vegan diet. But we never said that we're vegan. And in fact, you were always throughout your career, dad, encouraging people to eat less animal products. Now you say don't eat any fish due to all the environmental toxins and pollutants. But you always said less meat, less meat, less meat. It used to be make it under 10% of your diet. Now make it under five. You still are there. So what's the, what's the change? What's the ultimate recommendation? No, the recommendation is in today's society, we're, taught, we're encouraging people to follow a vegan diet and then supplement intelligently to take in those few nutrients and fill the gaps that the vegan diet doesn't have, which is particularly DHA, EPA, zinc, and B12. Those are the main three gaps. The things in your multivitamins and fish oils that you recommend that it sounds like are necessary to take so that we don't have any disease in our future. And there's some, you know, there might be 10% of people on vegan diets who can convert enough DHA from the ALA they're eating, but it's still a small percent. The majority of people are in trouble if they don't take it. So few people genetically can convert enough, mm -hmm. but that doesn't really speak for most people who can't, right? Do you recommend people get tested for this? Of course. Yeah, definitely. That's what we're, we're saying. The study I was looking for, the title of the study, it, show, it, it actually says, I'll read you the study title of the study. It says, an analysis of omega-3 clinical trials and a call for personalized supplementation for dementia prevention. The, the name of the um, scientific paper is or the, the medical journal, Expert Review of Neurotherapeutics, published in 2024. So it shows you that an individualized approach to give people the right dose of the supplement to get their level of omega-3 index in the most favored range showed the best protection against dementia. Actually, look what the study showed. And it looked at, what did it say? It looked at um, an analysis of all the clinical trials, right? They reviewed all the clinical trials. You have now, a, and you have a series of scientists like 10 different scientists working on this study for years and years, putting all this data together. And sometimes people don't respect some of these scientists that really dedicate their life to like uncovering this information that we benefit from. It's, and these, and you know, it's also important to point out that there was another study in 2021, which is a meta-analysis that looked at omega-3 in the blood levels and longevity. It showed that people with an omega-3 index greater than 8% lived about five years longer than those with an omega-3 index of less than 4%. And to put that into comparison, five years doesn't sound like that much, but statistically speaking, that's the same longevity difference comparable to smokers versus non-smokers. Right. It's huge. 